Hi, I'm Dr. Kent Weathers, and this is the Root Tip of the Week. And let's begin with a little magic. Hi, I'm Kit Weathers, and I want to show you a little trick with a deck of cards. Before I do that, though, I think what I'd like would be a blackboard right up here. Actually, that's a green board. I really would like uh, black so we could put our title up there. There we go. As a matter of fact, let's, uh, let's make a little close-up of the cards themselves so we can actually see what's going on. So today's trick, just take a deck of cards, nothing special about these, open up the deck, and we're going to take a red jack and a red queen out of the deck. And using these two cards, I'm going to place them inside the deck one at a time. And once they go to the middle of the deck, I'm going to immediately bring them back with a little magic. Watch. There they are. Now the way that's done is very simple. To learn the secret to this and other magic tricks on this series, please go to endorootcamp.com. I am Dr. Kit Weathers, and welcome to another edition of the Root Tip of the Week. My guest today is Dr. Leo Malin. Leo, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Leo has a private practice in implantology in Wisconsin, and he is also the director of implants at the Las Vegas Institute. Today, I would like to ask Leo, why would we want to do an implant when we could do a perfectly good root canal, and what are the reasons for doing and picking one over the other? Well, that's a great question. Kit, and I think that uh, it has several different answers. I, in my practice, generally what I do is always have the idea that I can do more dentistry later. So as a rule, I would look at a tooth, is it restorable, and is it restorable predictably? And if it can be restored predictably with a root canal, keeping the natural tooth, it would be the right thing to do. Um, if you have to, on the other hand, do crown lengthening, apical surgery, those types of things to salvage that tooth, then maybe you start to look at another option, which would be implants. So again, I think in practice, it's just another tool in the toolbox. And if you have both options available to your patients, it's probably you're better prepared than to treat that patient than someone else. My understanding is that the success rate for implants and endodontics is just about the same. Is, is that what pretty much what yeah, you're Yeah, it absolutely is. Even in a private practice, I find that same thing. If, if you can do a successful endodontic treatment, it's likely going to be there for the lifetime of that patient. If you do a successful implant placement, it's likely going to be there for the lifetime of the patient. I think it's two of the procedures that we do in practice that are highly successful, one of the most highly successful things that we can do. Uh, there does come a time or a point when a tooth is not restorable and should be replaced by an implant. And I think it's better than, than a bridge because you're not affecting the adjacent teeth. So I think both have reasons to be there. Both have been there for a long time and will continue to be there for a long time. But again, I think the, the diagnostic key is, uh, is the tooth restorable? And if you can keep the root of the tooth in place, why wouldn't you? There does come a, a point, though, that that doesn't make sense, and that's when implant dentistry comes in play. I would agree with that. As a matter of fact, uh, if you're going to be doing a root canal on a tooth and it's a retreatment case, I think maybe that's a pretty good argument against doing the root canal if you, because we know the success rate of retreatment is pretty low. Absolutely. But then not, not only that, you can always go to the next phase of treatment, which would be an extraction and a bridge or an implant. And in my mind, implants uh, certainly are better in most cases than bridges. Well, that's true. You do an implant, you can't put the tooth back in there and start over again. So exactly. that's a good point. Uh, anything else you'd like to tell our viewers before we slip away? We've only got a few minutes here, but lay another couple of pearls on us here. Well, I think in terms of endo, I mean, the, the, it, implants should be treated somewhat the same way. If you're capable of doing in endodontic therapy in your practice, you're going to be selective about the cases you do if you're a restorative dentist. And you're going to do the cases that seem appropriate in your hands and you can do predictably and, and quickly. Implants, I think, are the same way. There isn't any reason why most general dentists, restorative dentists, if they have any surgical interests at all, could place implants in their practice. That doesn't mean they're going to place them all. It doesn't mean they're not going to use the specialist when it's required or appropriate. But at the same time, I think implants are, are being, are the, the practice of implant dentistry is growing quickly, and it is growing in both the specialist hands and the general dentist hands. And it's just an alternative that uh, is certainly 
advantageous to patients that we treat. I could not agree more. Thank you for being here. I'm going to let you get one tiny plug in for your implant course because I know that the reason that so many GPs are now doing implants is with cone beam guided technology, it's become a very, very simple thing to do. So if you just give us your 60 second uh, condensation of what cone beam technology is, I'll let you go. Well, I'd be happy to do that. I think the course out here at LVI is as good as any course and better than, than most for one reason. We engage in the latest technologies. We, we talk about uh, CT technology and treatment planning software. And what that really does, it brings the technology to the forefront so that we can treat our patients more appropriately and get rid of a lot of surgical and restorative surprise. Uh, endodontics is a very mechanical process. Implants is becoming a very mechanical process. Before it was more of a mystery. You didn't know what you were getting into it until you were into it surgically and therefore a lot of surgery wasn't done because there were too many unknowns and too many things that could go wrong during the procedure. Endodontics on the other hand is a pretty well diagnosed scientifically based approach to treating a tooth and implants are becoming more and more that way. Uh, so I think they're very, they're, the two modalities are very closely related to each other and I think they're well within the realm of uh, the restorative dentist doing what they're comfortable doing. And that's really what we teach in the implant course is how can you do this predictably with long-term clinical successes. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you being here. Thank Thanks, you. Kip. Hope appreciate you'll drop it. by and see us again sometime. And we'll see you at the next Root Tip of the Week. And I will see you at the next Endo Root Camp. Thank you.